Welcome everybody to Arizona Real Estate News with Pat McMasters with Price Mortgage and Jackie and Ruby with Century 21. Hi. How's it going? Good. Great. How are you doing? Hey, this weather. I mean, I'm I normally complain about summer, but isn't it great? Except awesome. for the yeah, good humidity. Joy. The humidity's killing me. Oh man, but 89 degrees outside. I mean, come on. This is I love, <laughs> I love the applause. <laughs> You know, we didn't have any. Only in Arizona. And 106, yeah, that's and only in Arizona would the news say when it, when they predict it's going to be 95, that they call it a cooling trend. Yeah. So that's the one adjustment that I had to make when I first moved here. I, as soon as you go, what did they say? A cooling trend. It's going to be 95. So let's roll into the numbers here, shall we? Um, I always show the seven day moving average. I'll kind of put us on the bottom here. It makes it show a little bit bigger. And with the red line being the number of homes going under contract, and the blue line being the number of new listings that come on every week. And that's something I really want to emphasize today. And that is that the number of new listings coming on every seven days is not growing. It did the past few days, but as a rule, it's been coming down. But what's really come down are sales. We're at 2,670 today. And that's uh, our extremes for this market. The lowest we've ever been was uh, the 8th of January in 2008. We were at 2,732. So we beat that um, in the wrong direction. But so now you've got this ever growing gap here of available homes, not because more of them are being piled on, but because fewer and fewer of them are being purchased. And if I go a little further, you can see here that our inventory, even though it has grown, um, it hasn't grown as fast as it was the past couple of weeks. It was going up about a thousand a week. Now it went from 16,128 to 16,681, a little over 500. Mm -hmm. So that slowed down a little bit. Then maybe seasonal, but it just kind of, you know, lends a little credence to my theory of a listing ceiling. Here is sales month to date. And I'm going to pull out my handy dandy magnifying class. If you look at July 2021, it's 7,327. And you look at today, this is uh, the 28th, I think, of uh, July, 5,136. Big, big dip, right? Then you say, well, where do I go to find something that was that low? Um, you have to go to 2014 where it's 5,400. Hmm. And then it really tanked in July of 2008 down to 4,400. That's sales to date for a month. So 4,400 for a month, 2008, that shows you how bad that was. Are we going to get there? It doesn't look like it. It doesn't look like it's dipping quite that fast. Mm -hmm. And then when we look on new listings per month, this one shows the green number right here is July. It shows 10,038 versus last year of 10,587. So again, I want to emphasize that's a decrease, not an increase. So mm -hmm. we're having more listings available simply because people aren't buying them, not because everybody's rushing to sell their house. So that's a interesting little party out there. But Pat, what is going on in the world of lending? The world of lending. Um, well, we got uh, today, we're having a, the, the 10 year or the 30 year, four and a half coupons flat right now. And the 10 year treasury is up three basis points. This is a good sign from a rate standpoint because yesterday, this little red little can, uh, line right here was about the bond market was down about 89 basis points. We probably saw. Some rates change by about eighth to a quarter point in some cases in terms of, you know, cost or rate. So this was, you know, we saw the little run up. Rates are improved. Um, then we saw this day where just yes, yeah, yesterday was just it came out of nowhere, and um, they basically it was a whopper of a day. I mean, there was a couple of things. I, I was kind of like there was really no news, but then they said there was some Fed chairmen that came out. Remember, I told you last week. I said. Uh, we're going to see probably a volatile market based on the fact that the feds mapped out their 75 basis point twice, two times in a row. 
But now the question is, is it 50? Is it 75? So now we're going to see this, this jockeying. And I think that's where we started this, obviously, that yesterday, that, that move. And, um, you know, there's a couple of reasons. Obviously, we were simply, I think we were due for a, a, a reversal because these lines right in here, you can kind of see when somebody says they want a locker rate, I mean, you know, I was letting her, letting her run, but then there's a support. These lines right here are support or ceilings. This is a, this is a uh, support right here. This is a ceiling. So you can kind of see how it hit that line, went up above, and then went below it. And so it's you can kind of tra trade, obviously, day to day if you're locking in 30 days. But like I said, we were, I think we were due for reversal. The Fed's coming out. I mean, I mean, they said um, expectations of 75 basis points. You know, it's might be 50 basis points. And then the third thing you had was Nancy Pelosi, you know, going to Taiwan. I think that uh, that caused some turmoil. So, you know, you got China, you got inflation or recession, you got the feds. So it's, it's going to be, you know, I think we're going to be stuck in this channel. I mean, we're seeing rates, high fours, you know, jumped up, you know, low fives. And I think that's is kind of where we're going to be. Um, we're going to have days like that one day yesterday where it just well, craps in bed. Nothing like China threatening to shoot one of our high officials out of the sky to make you <laughs> sit back and go, ooh. <laughs> well, then, you know, that would be good for, I mean, that technically would be good for bonds. I mean, um, you well, know, I never cool. looked at it that way. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> That's what I look at. It. <laughs> I, I, I don't care who's getting sh shot out of the sky. I'm just looking at it from up. What's it, what are interest rates going to do? <laughs> Third in command yeah. was shot out of the sky. And <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm such a cold econ. I'm such a cold economist. Cold <laughs> economist. You, <laughs> it's falling so, apart again. Yeah. So anyway, that, I mean, we're gonna we're gonna see a channel. I mean, I think. Um, and we saw rates spike up, and uh, we're seeing this channel. But, you know, I think it just depends when you're going to lock a rate. You know, if you're 30 days in, you just have to watch them closely and just be ready to pounce. So that's my update for bonds. My cold-hearted my cold hearted response. Now this channel, Dan, they, they're canceling your interview. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was too rich. That was too rich. Oh my, oh my goodness. Where do we go from there? I know where yeah. we go from there. We're going to get to these boots on the ground and see what the heck's going on out there. Because, uh, Ruby, you were showing homes all weekend. What's up with that? Oh, yeah. I showed, uh, I think it was eight on Saturday and 13 on Sunday. So it was a long, couple of long days out in the hot humidity. But uh, we're waiting to see if we get the contract accepted now. So we wrote one finally last night and we're just waiting. So you got one of the 2,600 that are out there. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And she's got a few buyers working right now. Yeah. Yeah. I've got a listing appointment on Saturday and I've got uh, um, one active buyer and another, another buyer that we're going to try and nail down here pretty soon, but uh, it's not completely dead. There are people that, yeah. you know, they're looking there now there's, what are you hearing? Uh, Cause you know, we're looking at these numbers saying sales are down what are your buyers telling you why they're backing off are they backing off because they're priced out or are they backing off because they think there's an opportunity coming i think a lot of people think an opportunity is coming um i also think there's a lot of misinformation <laughs> out there uh, or not misinformation uh, scare tactics i've had a couple conversations with people who still thought rates are around six percent I don't know if they're not talking to their lenders or what's happening, but um, I, you know, even when you watch the news, you hear about the Fed raised interest rates, uh, 75 basis points, and then they leave it at that. They don't talk about where the interest rates are. And I think there's a lot of fear that people still think those rates are up high. And then I think there's a lot of confusion to the market that people don't understand what's going on. Uh, they're just seeing for sale signs pop up everywhere. So they're assuming that we're crashing when I still don't think that's going to happen. Well, and it is interesting. Transactions will crash. Yeah. And they, and they and are. That's happened. They're, they're happening quickly. But, you know, like one of the headlines I saw last week that said, you know, sales are down 20 percent, but prices are up. 
Well, that's a lagging indicator. You know, those, mm-hmm. those contracts were written 30, 60 days ago. So you'll see. And the, the, the numbers that came out um, for this last month, I'll see if I can pull it up here, which showed that uh, prices are indeed down um, pretty significantly. If I can show this to you real quick. Um, on the bottom here, it says, let's see, uh, the resale numbers are worse than anticipated with a huge drop in closed volumes and a large fall in median price of three hundred of $20,000 over 4% in just one month. Now, when we were rocking along and going, we had one month where we were up 3.5 and another one we were up 3.2. And now we got a month where we're down 4%. The new home numbers are better than expected with new high being reached in median sales price and only a small drop in units closed. Said an optimist might hope for a bounce back in August, but with the listings under contract down 6.5% compared with the beginning of this July, it looks highly unlikely. So the price is definitely already starting to come down, but now you wait for the headlines, right? Right. I had a conversation with an agent yesterday that we have a transaction going with in Cape Creek, and he does a lot in Desert Hills and Cape Creek. And he has a listing at Desert Hills, and he said um, it's in that between five and 600 price point. And he said he's getting quite a bit of showings on it. And he had somebody present an offer, and they came in 20% under list price. And he called the agent, and he said, um, I know this area really well and I've researched it and Desert Hills is down, about down 5% right now. Why are you sending me an offer that's 20% below? And the agent said, well, I'm hearing it's 20%. And so the agent, his name is Aaron, he sent over the information showing that Desert Hills was down 5%. And he said, well, we're anticipating 20%. Let me take that back. So we wrote it 20% below. Well, I think the 20% number which is a correct number is the traffic is down 20%. Transactions are down 20%. Not mm-hmm. and not we're, values. We're still up 15% year to date. So without, you know, cuz we were cranking along about 19% year to date, now mm-hmm. we're 15% year to date. So that's going to come down. We'll come down at the end of the year, it might be flat and that's a 20% drop, but that's still going to have to be extremely aggressive from where we're at today, which saw a 4% drop in a month. So, Mm -hmm. so you're going to have to go out, you know, what, five months to get that 20% that they're anticipating could happen, could not happen. So, but I I think, I I think there's an awful lot of that out there. And, uh, you know, I, I, my crystal ball is tucked away in, uh, in one of my past residences. (laughs) probably a good thing yeah <laughs> that is a good thing I, I think you know going forward um it just looks like we're gonna hang here for a while yeah maybe probably i i have I, a feeling we might pick up a little bit after everybody's back to school and done with summer vacations i mean this is a normal lull time anyways so how much of that is seasonal and how much of it is affordability and yeah, we won't really know until, say, if that's the case, middle of August. Yeah. Pretty much everybody will be back to school in the middle of August. Mm-hmm. So, I, did you have something, Pat? I, get... I, I just think, I think, you know, I think we're going to muddle. I mean, my talking to uh, mortgage people, talking to you know, agents, talking to clients, I mean, I, you know, I mean, there's a sense of confusion. You know, I don't want to say confusion, but like you said, like Jackie said, uh, they're just, I think people are, like I said, I, I look at it from my perspective, just mortgage guy 101 looking at it. And I think uh, the buyers are out there, but, you know, Joe and Mary Smith are just like, okay, you know, I've been pushed around for last year. I'm just going to sit back and see a little bit. If I can get that $500,000 house for, you know, 30, 40,000 or whatever, cheaper or whatever. I mean, I think that's, um, and there's always this, Settling out period when something gets shocked in the system, like rates going from three to six percent, we had that confusion um, in May and June. You know, April, May, and June. Like, okay, oh, you know, now if people are selling into the you know interest rates. Now they're obviously, like I said, the sellers. It just takes, I think, a two to three, four, five month period where people have to get adjusted to a mind mindset. Like I said, I think the buyers are kind of like, you know what. 
we're going to sit tight for a while. I mean, we're not in any rush. I mean, there's once again, it goes back to my theory. I repeat this a million times, but 35, 34, 35 million people are at 4% or lower. They're not in any rush to really sell or move. They're like, they're content. We have a lot of content people out there and the pe there's still activity. People have to divorces. People are moving. I still see activity, but um, the sellers, like I said, I think there is a lot of misinformation out there because you can get 50 different realtors or kind of like 50 different economists in a room and you got 50 different opinions on the economy. So absolutely. It's, it's all going to settle out. I mean, like I said, I think rates are kind of in this mid range, high, you know, mid high fours, low fives. Yeah, we might see spikes upward, but we're in this channel. So uh, there's, I, I just, I personally think, you know, like I said, I'm not being salesman, but I think the buyer that was really serious, I think we are seeing a lull. Um, and the buyers that get pushed around, it gives just some uh, good opportunity. So that's my well, two cents. Interesting one I bumped into this morning, and it was an, um, a realtor who has an investment. He's, he formed an investment company and bought, properties to rent and he's got a home that's been on the market for 60 days it's in uh queen creek and it has a tenant in it till the end of october um he just bought that in june of uh 2022 20, and he's turned around and put it on the market <laughs> it's like well I, what what part of his math didn't work out for him but um the other big news this week uh, i thought i'd raise with the group and you guys know it is that uh, what do you think of that fine that the FTC hit open door with, which was $62 million? It's about time. And you know what kills me is they're still denying the allegations, but they so quickly agreed to pay it. And so yeah. they're just going to pay it and move on. Well, that's usually what you do when you're a Hollywood star and you've been accused yeah. of some. <laughs> <laughs> Settle quickly. Well, yeah. And they, and what they were, but they're, for one, they were overstating what what it costs to go with a traditional real estate agent. That's the part that always got my goat. Mm -hmm. They would overstate it. And, you know, they would go, your average is 7 to 10% because they were factoring in your closing costs. And, and they never gave you a choice of title companies. You had to go with a title company that they owned. Mm -hmm. um, so you couldn't go out and, you know, and try to improve some of the fees on that. And they really would make a blanket statement about repairs and then come in and just hit you really hard. Right. Every open Absolutely. door deal that I've done, boy, that list of repairs is, and then they would say, but you know, if you sold that up with a realtor, people were going to ask you to fix that anyway. And I say, okay, that's not fine and dandy, but we're, we're not going to repair this, 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 and this then. And they wouldn't budge. I'm going to, I'm going to jump in real quick and look at it very simplistically uh, they got fined for a reason. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's, I mean, if they weren't yeah. doing, if they were doing everything on the up and up, FTC would not be fining them $62 million. So I, you know, it was just, it was just too much jiggy stuff going on. Um, you know, when you get jiggy stuff going on, I just, it just, that frustrates me. You know, well, now, I like transparency. We, and what we discovered yesterday was, and this is ominous to me, is that when you go and look at the listings, and the general public doesn't see this, but when you look at an open door listing and it says they're offering a $3,500 bonus to any realtors to bring them a buyer that closes on the end of September. Right. Mm -hmm. And they they're offering $1,000 in closing yep. cost contribution. Yep. I showed two of those this weekend. So what do you think that means? They're not, they're not selling. They're just sitting in there desperate. They got to unload their inventory. But they give you a date that by 930. So is that's is this, just, I think that that's yeah. just an enticement to push you to close before. I mean, we've put agent bonuses on plenty of our listings and it's just an enticement to get the ball rolling and make sure you're on top of it and get it done quickly and close on time so that you know, you you have a projected date, and there's no messing around. So yeah. So so <laughs> is this is this uh, an attempt to really get rid of their existing inventory now, and then take a more balanced approach, um, or is this the beginning of a fire sale? Are they going to plan on getting rid of all of them and and getting out on, on the fourth quarter? I think they're going to try to get out by the fourth quarter. Yeah. 
Absolutely. So they're going to write well, it off. They can't what they've done. Yeah, they can't continue with what they've been doing. It's it's a whole different ball game. Yeah, I noticed the uh, three day people. Their advertisement now has nothing <laughs> to do with uh, uh, getting X amount over your list price. They've switched to a new tactic that, that says when you put in your address, you will get forty two ready buyers that want your home. <laughs> That is so crazy. It's the same reverse <laughs> prospect anybody can do in MLS. <laughs> yeah, you can go and you can just pick and, and what and that's what they're doing, right? They're taking what is available to every agent that's out there and rolling that over into their own website. Except they twist everything just enough. Like I, my favorite was sell your home now for 50,000 more, stay in it for 6 months and buy when the market's low. But right. they would not explain to people, we just took a listing that was a 70 to, 72 sold listing. Yeah. We're just listing it right now in Whitman. That lady was so disgusted with realtors in general at first until I was, you know, sat down and had a conversation with her. But she's like, they didn't put a sign in my yard. I never heard from them. They got the listing agreement signed, took pictures, never heard boo. They Nothing. They didn't even, they didn't do an open house. They didn't do a, you know, three hour on Saturday showing nothing. They did hmm. nothing and never communicated with her once it expired. Never heard from them. Wow. It's just a follow. She no, was I disgusted. Don't, I, I, I don't disparage anybody that takes um, data that you can get from the multiple listing service and simplifies it and puts it in a one spot where you can pull that because the general public can't do that. They can't right. do reverse prospecting. I mean, that's what makes Zillow so popular because now I can see uh, what a house costs in Dallas, where back in the right. 90s, I'd have to call, call an agent. Some, call an agent, yeah. And uh, so so they're taking information that you and I have that we see all the time, and they're putting it together into a product and then putting it out to the, to the public. But it does make us go, you know, it doesn't mean that you have, you know, 42 buyers in a in a filing cabinet. <laughs> Just, right. Right. And, and quite honestly, circle prospecting, uh, reverse prospecting doesn't give you that much anyway. All it yeah. does is it pulls the agent, um, but it doesn't pull the actual client. So I'm curious what their source is for the actual buyer. Cause that, uh, that shouldn't be. Well, you could set up at all. So you could set up all of the buyers that are working with any of the agents. You can set it up to reverse prospect any of your buyers. So if they're pooling the buyers, it's that's possible. Taking all the data that they had for people that were originally going in and mm -hmm. looking at the stuff and making And those might be people. people that already bought, but they're yeah. sitting in their system. Right. I, I mean, I, I wouldn't put it past had, them. Another one I saw, somebody asked me a question about the other day and it was they said that they said that they can get you 11% more. And like Answer was eleven percent more of what? <laughs> yeah. What what is what is that? Yeah. Pat, Open I door. You ten percent more. Yeah. Well, ten percent more. Oh well, what What's like you would normally have got? What got how? You you need something to compare it to. Like if I, I had this friend of mine, she goes, uh that's a I heard that's a great a good stock. You know, stock, you know, buying stocks. She goes, I go, compared to what? Good stock compared to uh you know, a penny stock that went bankrupt or, you know, I mean, yeah. <laughs> you need something to compare yeah. stuff to. Yeah. 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 You're comparatively good looking, Pat. <laughs> <laughs> Compared to, uh, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll leave I it there. Out something. <laughs> <laughs> Compared to the elephant man. Now we don't have any strong economic data coming up uh, this week or next week. There's no one to, on a, is there an unemployment report next week? Yeah, no, it's actually coming up. Uh, they've got some employment numbers coming up Friday. You know, it's, there's gonna be a little vault, you know, might be a little volatility here. Uh, Friday, there's some, you know, unemployment numbers um, coming out, but yeah, so we're gonna see a little more volatility. So, and I, you know, until we get set on the feds, see what their direction is gonna be. Like you said, I think it's gonna be kind of volatile up and down. So, well, we'll check in with you on Friday at three o'clock, and then I uh, will. I'm going to be in town all week, so let's get Sounds some good. business done. Okay. Sounds good. All right, everybody, take care. Have, Have a, a good day. one. Hey. <laughs>